Welcome to the second London uh, Health and Care Leaders Forum. I'm Dr. Phil Hammond. I'm hosting this today. Uh, I trained as a GP for 21 years. I now work as an associate specialist with children and young people with chronic fatigue syndrome uh, at the Royal National Hospital for Rheumatic Diseases in Bath. And I work in the, the adolescent, child and adolescent chronic fatigue unit. Uh, and uh, all our consultations go public. All the, re the reviews go public. I'm on I Want Great Care. Uh, and the other day I had someone who travelled all over the country to see us because they'd read a review on I Want Great Care and they thought we'd be kind and knowledgeable. Uh, and that's perhaps the way things are going. Neil Bacon has actually had a, somebody who chose a brain surgeon recently on the basis of reviews on I Want Great Care. Uh, so we're always slightly sniffy about patient experience, but it's probably the one thing. It's the one thing that doctors do when they try to negotiate good care is they phone around and find out where the best care is through public recommendation. Uh, and those sort of sites, I think, might make a difference in the future. So... The theme of this is patient voice and patient choice. The bottom line is whatever we say today has to be translatable into ways that are good for patients. I just reviewed a book this week for The Times uh, called uh, Do No Harm, and it's the memoirs of Henry Marsh, who's a very famous uh, neurosurgeon at St. George's. Extraordinary candor. We talk about a compulsory duty of candor to admit when we've harmed patients. He has absolutely nothing to hide. I've never heard anyone read quite so openly and honestly about the harm you can cause, uh, the catastrophic failures of neurosurgery as well as the good. Really profound leadership in that sense, clearly a very dedicated teacher, clearly a very empathic man, but the most depressing part of the book, complete lack of engagement with his hospital managers. He's got through seven chief executives, he only met one or two of them. Can everyone show, their, show me their keypad to make sure they've got it? We're going to run through a series of questions first just to find out who you are and uh, where we think we are now. We're going to repeat uh, the questions at the end of the session. Uh, so here's our first question. Uh, can you just tell us who you are? What organisation are you from? A choice between one, uh, well, there are 10 choices there. The last thing you press will be the one that goes in, because if you change job in the next five seconds, uh, it's the last thing you press. Uh, you have five seconds to cast your vote now. And there we go. Uh, we might be able to see what the results are if we're quick. Oh, look at that. So lots of you. A few others here. Where are the others sitting? Put your hand up. Here another. Excellent. I'm a few others. Don't want two others sitting together, which is nice. That's always good. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to have some others with us. Uh, okay, let's have the next question. Uh, what are the top issues for London's health and social care system? Read these closely. One, financial pressure. Two, quality of care. Three, hospital reconfiguration. Four, primary care transformation. Integrated care, reshaping the workforce, clinical leadership, public health transformation, patient and public engagement. Sadly, no option for all of the above. So rather irritatingly, you'll have to choose one of those. Uh, nine choices. You have five seconds to cast your vote now. OK, let's see what the results are now. Look at that. Most of us at the moment uh, are saying, I think that's integrated care uh, and uh, financial pressure are the two big ones, as we might expect. OK, let's have our next question. Uh, select your top three issues here. Uh, one button selecting highest priority, third button is your third priority. OK, what are the top three enablers that will make a difference to you? I'll give you 10 seconds to cast your votes now. Okay, finish voting, and let's see the results. So our favorite ones uh, are effective and courageous leadership. Okay, next question. As a leader in your organization, do you feel you have the capacity to lead the transformational change in, purpose, in services? So do you feel you have the capacity that you need at the moment? Uh, yes, no, or not sure. And the results are... Okay, so quite a few people have the capacity, uh, quite a few people don't. So maybe some shared capacity is needed by the end of today.